This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Transporter, the solution to your cloud storage needs. Transporter provides you with a private cloud that you control, but that can be shared with anyone and accessed on any of your iDevices. Whether you want to share photos in a secure fashion, share confidential documents without concern, or implement an automatic offsite backup, Transporter is your answer. Get 10% off your Transporter by visiting filetransporter.com slash MV and use the coupon code MACVOICES. The Transporter is available from all your favorite retailers, but you can only get the 10% off if you buy from the website. Thanks to Transporter for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices at Macworld iWorld 2013 in San Francisco. I'm Chuck Joyner. We're in the Busy Cow booth talking to John Chafee of Busy Cow about Busy Cow 2. John, it's great to see you. Good to see you, Chuck. We've been trying to talk to you about Busy Cow now ever since it came out, and we can't get our schedules together, so I corralled you finally. What's new with Busy Cow 2? And I'll say right up front, this is my calendar application of choice. I don't know why anyone would use anything else. Thanks, Chuck. Well, we released a new version, 2.0, about three months ago, late October. And uh, we added a number of popular feature requests. It's, um, well, I think the best way to explain it is to show it to you. That's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, is this going to work out okay? So I'm looking at uh, the BusyCal uh, month view right now. And it's, uh, we're, here we are on February 1st. And I'm seeing um, the entire month of February. One of the new things we added is the ability to scroll not only uh, a month at a time like you normally would, uh, but we added the ability to scroll a week at a time. So if I click on these uh, inner arrows, I can just scroll one week at a time, which is a really handy way to be able to see always into the future a few weeks. Or, or better yet, we also added the ability to specify how many weeks you want to see in your month view. So perhaps you only want to see three months as opposed to an entire month, so you get a little more detail. Or Maybe you want to do some long-range planning and view 12 weeks at a time. You could do that. And using uh, some command keys over here, command option plus and command option minus, I can resize that dynamically. So I can just hit the keys until I get just the, just the view I'm looking for. So we've did, done that, uh, the ability to do custom uh, views in the month. You can do the same thing in the week. The week view can display a single week at a time up to uh, two weeks at a time. Uh, or anywhere in between. So I can drop that down to maybe I want to see five days, for example. So that's a handy feature. You also notice that uh, in the current month view, you can see that there's a 10-day weather forecast appearing in the calendar. Uh, that's, a, that's a new enhancement. It used to be five days. We got that up to 10. And we're using Weather Underground for that. And it uses core location. So I can tell it to show me the weather at my current location. And it'll look that up. and. In a moment, hopefully, it'll figure out that we're in San Francisco. I was just showing how you could enter in a custom zip code uh, for a customer here who was from LA, and it was showing his, uh, the weather in his area. And you'll notice that uh, the weather style is showing as a background image where you can see the actual color of the day. We have the small icons, which show the weather's just in the little header of each cell. Or you can show them large or you can do it with the background color, which looks kind of neat. And we do the same thing with moon phases. You'll see over here, there's a little moon icon on February 3rd. We've added a few additional styles for that as well. I prefer the astrological style, looks kind of cool. So that's the weather. Um, another thing we've always done, um, which we still do, is the ability to put to-dos in your calendar. I show this every year when you come by. <laughs> and it's always something I think that needs to be restated. Yeah, it's, um, you know, Apple and Mountain Lion removed to-dos from, from iCal, which is now known as OS X Calendar. And um, we still show you those to-dos, and they sync now with the Reminders app on OS X and iOS and iCloud. Um, I should probably even go back and say that everything here in BusyCal syncs with iCal um, through iCloud. So that's the, the main requirement. If you're using iCloud or Google Calendar or some other type of CalDev server, BusyCal connects to that and syncs with your other built-in apps through the cloud. Talk for just a second about how to interact Google Calendar with BusyCal and with iCloud, and is it possible to integrate it all together? That 
because that seems to be the biggest competition, I guess, for iCloud is and and, and Busy Cow and the regular calendar uh, syncing is is Google Calendar. Yeah, so we've always supported Google Calendar uh, and iCloud, and we still do. If you look in the left sidebar here, it shows that I have some calendars here that are located on Google. I have other calendars that are located on iCloud. And if there's any other types of CalDev servers that you're connected to, perhaps in your work environment, those would appear here as well. So um, BusyCal can connect to all these different servers and show you your information in BusyCal, the same way that you can do in iCal, as well as the calendar app on the, on the iPhone. So you can centralize everything in BusyCal regardless of who's keeping their calendar where. That's right. And so it really kind of depends. We have some customers that maybe it's individuals, families, or very small work groups, and for them, they primarily use iCloud. There are other people maybe in larger organizations or who have coworkers running Windows, and for them, Google is a better alternative for them to share calendars. So it's, it's up to your situation. How about iOS integration uh, with calendar or calendar applications on the iPhone or iPad? So we sync, since we sync with iCloud and Google, any information that you put into BusyCal that syncs with those cloud services will sync to your iOS device into the built-in apps on the device. So when you configure your calendar app on your iPhone to sync with your iCloud account, that will sync with the data in BusyCal. Great, so it's a complete solution. Yep, I, got, I have more to show you. Go for it, sorry. <laughs> So, I should have known that. That's all right. So you've seen the to-dos where I can, for example, create a to-do here on this day. Maybe I need to uh, buy batteries. And I misspelled it, but I'm not going to fix it. And I typed that right down here into the event info panel. I got, actually, I've got to go change that. So there, buy batteries. And this to-do, when I complete it, will show up on the day that it was completed with a check mark in front of it. If I don't complete it, it will keep forwarding each day to the current day until I do mark it as completed. Um, those to-dos will sync with the Reminders app on your iPhone. Um, and you also have the ability to repeat those to-dos. So if you need to take out the trash every Monday, for example, you can create a repeating to-do for that. You'll see in the left, in the sidebar, on the right, we also display to-dos here. So we can show to-dos in the calendar if they have a due date associated with them. And for your undated to-dos, those would be displayed in the sidebar here. And I've actually created some separate calendars for different types of to-dos. I have a groceries calendar that's where I can put my groceries list as well as a to-dos calendar for putting to-do items. And um, what I want to show is how you can integrate this with our alarm menu bar app. So if you look up in the menu bar, there's a little bell icon. And if you click on that, it shows you a list of your current day's events and to-dos. And you can click on those to, to see the details. Um, and you can even mark things as done. So if I want to complete these by batteries, if we now click back here, you'll see that it marked that off as completed in my calendar. And you can also use it to create events. So you'll see down here, there's a little quick entry field. And I could say, um, I'll say meet, meeting with Chuck. Friday, what time is it? 11 a.m. At 11, whoops, it's hard to type from where. So meeting with Chuck at Friday at 11 a.m. I hit return and it actually put that in my calendar as an event on Friday at 11 a.m. So you can, the alarm app you can use when you're not running BusyCal to see and, and add events. And it can also be used with a hotkey to create new entries, and if I, for example, want to create a to-do, I just type in a dash to indicate this is a to-do, and I could say, you know, I want to buy beer, and if I want that to go onto a specific calendar, I can enter the, the name or a partial name for that calendar, and I happen to have a calendar called groceries, so I entered slash GROC, and I put return, it puts that to-do on my groceries list. So it's, uh, you know, at create events that way. Now, there's more. Um, another thing that Apple changed in Mountain Lion is the alarms for iCal. So they use the notification center for alarms, um, which are nice. They display in, a, in the side you know, as a little bubble, but they don't give you any options for snoozing the alarms. Um, and we do support the notification center, but we also give people the option to, to use the BusyCal alarm window instead. And if I bring up preferences, You'll see here for the alarms, you can either use the notification center or the, the BusyCal alarm window. And I have that selected right now. 
And for each of your events, you can define different defaults. So for my appointments, I want to be warned five minutes in advance. For my to-dos, I want to be told about them at 9 a.m. the day that they're due. And for birthdays, tell me about them seven days in advance. And you can set these to whatever you want, including how long you want your default snooze to be. So let me go ahead and create a new event on today. We'll just call it my event. And I'll tab into the um, start time field. I'm actually going to type the word now, and that will put to the time as now, and I'll then use the arrow keys to, to increment it by one minute. So now this is going to be an event at 11.04 a.m., and I'm going to set an alarm for it. Instead of being five minutes before, I'm going to set it for at start. Okay, so now I've got an, a, an event that's going to trigger an alarm at exactly 11.04 a.m., and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that event a couple times and just rename it so that we can see all of the alarms. Okay, so I've got three events now. They're all going to trigger an alarm in approximately three seconds. And there's the BusyCal alarm window. So now you can see I've got three events. I could take this one and say, you know what, I want to snooze that for one minute. And it can be any number of minutes, hours, or days, including a before start time. I'll snooze that. I'll dismiss this one. And I'll show this one, which will bring it up for me in my calendar so I can see it. And you can also uh, mark to-dos as completed in the alarm window as well. So a lot of people really are, are procrastinators, and so they have these alarms popping up, and they want to be able to snooze it for a certain number of minutes or whatnot. And that's one of the advantages of the, of the BusyCal alarm window. And, and that's a huge advantage. Uh, because I'm leave you with, I've, okay. I've used both. And just the ability to say, OK, I don't need to know in five minutes. I need to know in an hour. Something happened. I need, you know, that, exactly. that's wonderful. Thanks. So I'll show you one last feature, and it's a, a biggie. It's called Smart Filters. So you'll notice that I have a lot of calendars here in the left sidebar. And, it, and you can group your calendars to make it easy to toggle you know, a group of calendars on and off. But many times, you might want to show calendars across different services. So for example, I'm just going to command click to turn all my calendars off. Let's say I want to be able to see, oh, there's the alarm I snoozed. I'll dismiss that now. Let's say I want to see my Fred calendar, exercise, groceries, and work. And this is a common view I want to be able to work in. So if I wanted to be able to automatically show those calendars, I can create a new smart filter. And I can tell it to remember my visible calendars. And we'll call this the, the Chuck filter. So I'll click OK. And it adds that to my toolbar here. So now I can go back to this filter I've got that shows all the events. And then I can go over here and click on the Chuck event. And now it just shows the events that match that criteria. So it's very handy. And those smart filters can be pretty sophisticated. Uh, for example, I think um, I'll, just, I'll just show you here in the filter bar. You might want to create an, uh, a filter that searches for events that contain certain strings. You know, maybe anything that contains the word Chuck or perhaps anything that's been modified that's been modified maybe uh, today. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just call this one mod. You can put all kinds of criteria in there, so I'll add that. And so now this is showing me all the events that I edited today, for example. So you can do some pretty nice things, and it's particularly useful in the list view. So maybe you're doing some client billing and you want to look at all the events that match a certain client name that were modified in the last week or something like that. And you could do that here in the list view. So you just keep coming up with ways to bend, fold, and spindle and mutilate my data, and they're all useful. We're, we're doing our best. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, the BusyCal is available in the App Store. Yes, it's Mac App Store only, and uh, it's a new product that we're selling at upgrade pricing. Uh, it's currently $29.99 on the App Store until uh, Probably for about, an, well, we're currently saying it's available until February 15th at that price. Now, it, that might get extended, and I don't know when your show is going to air, so uh, there's probably going to be a little bit more time beyond that. That's good. That's <laughs> good. It's, it's a great program. I, you know, I, live, I live in it every day. It's one of my essential productivity tools, and so I just hope you keep making it better and better. Trouble is, I don't know what to ask for, but you keep coming up with things that are useful. Well, you've got my email address if you think of anything. 
John, it's great to see you. The, the website um, for folks who want to learn more before they buy. It's busymac.com. Good to see you. Thanks. You too. Thank you. Folks, more from Macworld iWorld 2013 in San Francisco. I'm Chuck Joyner on the show floor. Thanks for watching. Mac Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group at macvoicesgroup.com. Advertising handled by BackBeat Media at backbeatmedia.com.